with another Chicago team that is red hot, the Blackhawks. They played at the United Center this afternoon against a frisky bunch of Ducks. The fighting mighty Ducks from Anaheim. Hawks going for their fifth in a row. The Hawks got another great game from Bernie Nichols. This guy's had a great season so far. Nichols scoring here. He has five goals in the last three games. 21 for the year now. Hawks on their way. Later on the second period, Sergei Krivokrasov scores, getting his second goal of the game, 10th of the year. Hawks led 3-1. That came on a power play. Then two strange goals a bit later on. Watch this one in slow-mo as the puck goes off Joe Murphy's skate into the net. The Hawks are leading in the game over Anaheim, and they wrapped it up later on even more bizarre on this one. Cam Russell, his fourth career goal, pops nicely over the goalie. Hawks having fun. They win 5-2, but it was not as easy as it all looked. We have to play our best hockey every game is all the way in. I mean, you don't have a hot and cold team going to the playoffs and do well. So we're going to pride ourselves the last 18, 19 games to play hard no matter who we're playing. And uh, it's going to be the key to our success. We have enough uh, talent here and older guys to take care of whatever we have to do here at home. And, uh, I just think that things are obviously going as well as they possibly can go. And, you know, we're sitting right where we want to be. And for Cam Russell, the puck was exactly where it wanted to, we wanted it to be in that crazy goal. You see it again. Cam talked about it afterwards. I shot it, and we could both see it was going in. He was, he was going, no, no, no. And I was going, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How loud he was saying? Yeah, I could hear him. So I, I, as soon as I heard that, I guess I knew it was going in. <laughs> so the Hawks win 5-2. That comes from the United Center. It happened in the Blackhawks. Dramatic loss, and I'm not talking about the game against Dallas. In the second period, a possible season-ending injury to the Hawks' best and most popular player, Jeremy Roenick. It was a chippy game from the very start. Darren Kimball involved in a skirmish. Jim Cummins got into it. Everybody needs dental work out there. As for the hockey, Dallas got on the board first. Ed Belfort's been giving up a lot of rebounds lately, including this one to Gord Donnelly. In the second period, Joe Murphy surprised the Stars young goalie Mike Torquia, but that was the only surprise the Hawks could manage. And then disaster. Jeremy Roenick on the move. Never saw Darian Hatcher stick the leg out. Late word is a torn anterior cruciate ligament in JR's left knee. You can see the pain in his face as he hits the ice. He is gone for the season. And to add insult to that devastating injury, Dallas gets the game-winning goal from Mike Donnelly. And afterward, the Hawks were screeching. Cheap shot. I'll put it this way. The guy that did it is, is good at doing it. So, because I've seen it happen before, and, and uh, it's disappointing that's not called. It hasn't been the first time uh, JR's been knee need like that this year. It's, it's happened, uh, you know, probably five to ten times. Of it, you know, and he's been fortunate enough uh, not to be injured before. But this time, uh, the way JR plays and uh, goes out there and, uh, you know, puts his whole body in the line, it, it happens. We were disappointed we didn't win, no question. And obviously, we're really upset with JR. Uh, you know, when your best player goes down, it's pretty tough to take. So uh, we just have to rebound and uh, come out and bow back. Yeah, they will without Jeremy Roenick. Again, the final score, Dallas 2 and the Hawks. We're out of a four-game winless streak. The Hawks in Winnipeg against the worst team in the Western Conference, the Jets. And things began poorly for Red Bell for the Hawks. And this one, a crowd in front of the cage here on this play. And the puck will go in the net. Dave Gillen gets credit for the goal as it trickled in there against Eddie. But the Hawks tied the game in the second. The power play here. This is Tony Amonti. Nice work here. He slaps it in there against Tim Chevalier. 1-1. But later in the period, Alexei Zamnov will get the go-ahead goal for the Jets. The Hawks looking tired in back-to-back -back games. Let's check the board and see what's going on there. Now in the third, Winnipeg leads it by a score of two deals. Today is a trading deadline passed in hockey, but the Hawks did welcome back an old friend to practice, Dennis Savard, working out with the team after being acquired yesterday from Tampa Bay. Savard is joining a beleaguered group of Hawks, winless in their last five games. Savvy, not the spinorama specialist of his youth, and at age 34, he has no illusions about replacing the injured superstar, Jeremy Roenick. I'm here to do a job and try to help the Blackhawks. You know, uh, obviously I cannot place JR, and I think everybody knows that. Uh, as I said yesterday, a lot of people. I'm not 24 anymore. I'm 34. So, but I, I came in with good intention. You know, to, to get the job done and uh, you know to play hard with the boys and try to get the, our team to, to go as far as as far as we can to play off or to the Stanley Cup final. And on hand to watch Savard's first practice was Jeremy Roenick, who took over as number one Hawk after Savvy left for Montreal a few years ago. I think it's awesome. I think, uh, you know, Savvy, as everybody knows, has meant a lot in my career. Uh, before he left, 
and um, I think come him coming back here, this is where he belongs. He belongs in Chicago. He's a he's a Chicago hockey player. Savard had but six goals at Tampa this year, but he will try to pump some life into the Hawks' power play that has slumped to 13 percent in recent games. Even so, the Hawks still lead the NHL in power play opportunities. It will be counting on Savard for a bit of a revival. Obviously, he's going to be on the power play for pushing Jeremy, and he's going to give us that experience and depth that we need at center. And uh, we're going to need him a lot. We're going to rely on him a lot. Him, Chansey, uh, Pop, and Bernie, they're going to have to step it up now, and uh, we're going to have to play better as a team. Batted up pretty good by those high-flying Detroit Red Wings. In the first period at the United Center, Eric Weinrich falls down a bit, and the Wings cash in as Ray Shepard scores. 1-0 against Ed Belfour. After a score of the second period, the Wings strike again. The breakaway this time, Keith Primo in there all alone. He scores. 2-0 Wings. Later on then in the third, the killer. The puck gets battered around a little bit in the cage. It trickles behind Belfour. Steve Eiserman gets the goal. 3-0 in favor of the Wings. That was just about it, although the Hawks did later on get a consolation goal off the faceoff here. Dennis Savard beating Mike Vernon. Savard, of course, back in his first game. Still the Hawks lose. They are now winners in their last six games, the final 4-1, and Daryl Sutter is searching for some answers. It's a concern with, with uh, the number of people that we have that are willing to crash the net. Um, not every goal is a highlight film goal. And uh, we need to be a little bit more determined around the net. As long as we come with the right attitude and, and then just start working a little harder and, and just, you know, try to do things a little better than we've been doing. I think maybe play with a little motion, more emotion and more heart, then I think we'll be all right. Well, Savvy sure played with emotion and perhaps a few butterflies in his first game at the United Center. Then it's relieved this game is now by the board. What I was concerned is to get this game out of the way. You know, I'll get, you know, I knocked the country in hockey and come ready to play against Wednesday, again Wednesday. And, you know, it just felt great. Since Jeremy Roenick's injury, they haven't won a game tonight. They slug it out with San Jose, which took a bite out of Ed Belfour in the first period. Jeff Friesen, the big effort, five and a half minutes in. And the Sharks take a one-nothing lead. But in the second period, Archer Zerbe without his goal stick. He got one from a teammate, but he couldn't stop Murray Craven. His first as a Hawk, 1-1. 33 seconds later, the Hawks had the lead. Joe Murphy's 19th, a bleeder that got through. It was 2-1 Chicago, but the Sharks bounced back. Kevin Miller, midway through the second period, uh, got the equalizer, and right now in the third, it's still tied 2-2 at the United Center. And the Hawks' winless streak grew to nine games. An ugly and bloody rematch with the Stars today. If you remember Dallas' Darian Hatcher ending Jeremy Roenick's year a couple of weeks ago, bad blood boiling today. The Hawks even more steamed about their offense. Twelve goals in eight games coming in here. And the Stars on the board first. Belfort couldn't find the handle. Mike Donnelly scored 1-0. Hawks had some chances. They had 24 shots on Andy Moog, but they couldn't get one past him. And Belfour gave up another ugly goal in the third. It bounced off Hatcher's back, finally behind Belfour, where Dave Gagne snapped it in. Then, with four minutes left, instigated by Shane Churla, the Hawks finally snapped. Call it Ronick's revenge or whatever. This brawl encompassed almost everybody on the ice, including the officials and the goaltenders. You can look for suspensions later in the week. Chelios and Steve Smith among those tossed out. Even the equipment guy took a shot to the jaw. And the Hawks keep on sliding, 2-0 the final in Dallas. Coach Pat Burns dazzling in Raspberry tonight at the United Center, where the Blackhawks have been anything but. They're trying to snap out of a nine-game winless streak and stay ahead of the Leafs in the battle for fourth place in the West. But Matt Sundin put Toronto ahead early. Would not stand up. Later in the first, the Hawks tied it. Here's Pat Foley's call on MVP. Here's a shot, and a save by Potman, and they score! But after a scoreless second period, Toronto back in front after Mike Ridley scored off a scramble in front of Belfour. Hawks losing again, 2-1 to one in the third on the west side. The Hawks, at least tonight, have been able to get the biscuit in the basket a couple of times, but will that be enough to stop the 10-game winless streak? To the United Center, and not only did they light up the board, they did it first against the Blues. Sergei Krivokrasov able to flip it up and over John Casey, 1-0 in the first. And chippy, chippy, Jim Cummins losing his nightly bout. Basil McCray got him this time. The Blues tied it up, but the Hawks retake the lead in the second period. Gary Suter teed it up and scored. Hawks back in front. Jeremy Roenick liked it. That's where he'll sit the rest of the year in the seats. But this Dave Roberts kid for St. Louis, 
got his first NHL goal last night, comes back with two tonight. And in the third period, it's still tied up two and two with the United Center. It is, yeah. The kids can't get out of this slump. The Hawks are trying to avoid a dirty dozen tonight. Hawks win us in their last 11 games. They face the Winnipeg Jets at the United Center. Things get off to a rugged start. Dennis Savard here in the first period getting a stick in the ribs. And Savvy had to leave the game, has not returned for the Blackhawks with the rib injury. Then later on in the first period, Greg Brown gets a stick in the face of Sergei Krivokrasov. Brown gets the game misconduct, and the Hawks get a five-minute power play out of this. It took them most of it, but they finally cashed in a great feed here from Bernie Nichols to Tony Amante. And Amante buries it. one nothing. Blackhawks. He beats Tim Shovelday. Then, though, in the second period, the Hawks in the power play. Tepro Newmanen scores against Eddie Belfort to tie it up. Hawks trying to avoid falling in the sixth playoff spot and ending their slide, of course. And here's the score, though. Winnipeg leads now 2-1 that game in the third period. Unbelievable. St. Louis futility as Vancouver came calling. They were stuck on 19 wins since March 26th. Both teams tied for fifth in the Western battle for seeds coming into the game at the United Center. One zip box, second period. Dave Babbage finds Pavel Bure who ties the game at one. Then the Canucks breaking out of the zone. There they go. Trevor Linden. Roman Oksuda, who walks right in. Blackhawks, that's what you call a defensive lapse. 2-1 Vancouver. Here we go again. I think the Blackhawk fans who haven't seen their team scored more than three goals since Roenick went out. But then Chelios works the boards. Joe Murphy sets up Savard. Murphy knocks the puck home on the rebound. Ties the game at two. It was tied at three going into overtime. Pandemonium. The Blackhawks win. The drought is over. And because of all kinds of complicated TV rights stuff, we can't show you the goal. It happened just seconds ago. Chicago's drought is over. They hadn't scored three goals in the last 11 games since Roenick went out. They still haven't given up more than three goals, by the way, in the last eight games. They jump ahead of Vancouver by two points now. Tie with Toronto for that fourth seed in the battle for home ice in the first round. The Blackhawks would have the tiebreak edge over Toronto. They have one more victory. Well, on the current Blackhawks roster, Jeremy Roenick leads the way with 29 playoff goals, but that guy's been on the shelf with a knee injury since April 2nd, and Chicago couldn't get a win without him until just two nights ago. Tonight, the Hawks were hosting Dallas and bidding for back-to-back -back wins after a 13-game winless streak. It always gets physical when these two teams get together. You've got to watch out for yourself. First period, Kevin Hatcher just kind of poaching behind the net there, and he pokes it past Ed Belfour. That put Dallas up one to nothing. There's Roenick. Still in the first, Chris Chelios with the puck to Dennis Savard in front. He just packs it right in there. That tied it at one. Then in the second period, Joe Murphy just inside the blue line, and he unloads. Chicago is up 5-1 to one in the second. Bob Ganey didn't like it at all. That's the way it ended, 5-1. During that winless streak, the Hawks never scored four goals in any one game. Now they've gotten at least four in back-to-back -back games. Tonight, Winnipeg at the United Center, and the Jets are playing for their playoff lives and playing it tough. The Hawks down 1-0. Sergei Krivokrasov took the hit, set up Jim Cummings on the breakaway. Count that, 1-1 one, one after 1. Winnipeg scores first in the second period, but the Hawks got the equalizer again. This time, Jeff Shantz takes it all the way, shorthanded and unassisted at 9.51. They're now in the third, and it's 2-2. The Hawks and the Jets. 